recently been talking about the eventual release of GIMP 3 and its GTK 3 UI, but optimistically, the early, early releases are still probably a couple of months away. But maybe you need an image editing app today. Maybe you want one that isn't inspired by the work of Photoshop, but a very different kind of editing tool. This is Textual Paint. As the GitHub says, Microsoft Paint in your terminal. But that should have been pretty obvious. Now, when I first heard about this, I sort of wanted to meme on it. I wanted to do a video like my Eagle video where I was talking about the really cool things it did, but I wasn't taking it as like a serious project. And I would be lying if I said that this was a practical application to use on a day-to-day -day basis. But I would also be lying if I said it was a badly made project. Like any good clone of paint, you have your standard array of tools. Now, each of these tools do have a tooltip, so if the icon there isn't entirely clear, that should help you out quite a bit. Now, these tools don't have hotkeys associated with them, but a lot of the items in the menus do. So if you want to do something like, you know, making a new file, opening a file, things like that, you can always check out the hotkeys here. That will make things a little bit quicker to work with. So, what tools do we have? Well, let's start with... Fill with color. If we go and select one of the colors from down here, like say this blue, boop, there we go, filled with color. You know how fill with color works. We also have our standard array of drawing tools. Let's swap to another color, like red here. We have our pencil here. This is a very small marker to draw with. We have our brush. This is going to be a wider thing to draw with. And we also have our airbrush. This is usually going to be like the spray paint tool, things like that in various paint clones. Now the colors you're seeing down here, these are not the only colors available. This is not a 16 color application, it is not a 256 color application, it is a true color application. So it's not going to work in every single terminal, but it will work in things like Alacrity, in Kitty, in ST, and things like that. Now if we want to go and mess with the colors, what we can do is go up to colors. From here we have get colors, save colors, and edit colors. Now get colors, this will let you load in a GIMP color palette. Save colors will allow you to go and save the custom colors you make in the application, and then edit colors, this will bring up a color picker. If you've ever used a color picker in pretty much any application, this is going to seem like it makes a lot of sense. So we can go and choose one of the basic colors or just go and select a color fully from here. And we also have the values in here as well. If we find a color we like, let's say a, let's go a dark green, for example, we can go and add it to our custom colors. If you don't select the custom color you want to use, it will replace the first one. Otherwise, what you can do is if you go and select a slot and then go and change the color, then it will go and replace that slot. Now, with our custom color, if we have this selected and then close out of the window, now that is the color we are actually using. Let's use this color for something useful, a feature that doesn't exist in GIMP a shape tool. So we have our line tool here. If we go and select a point and then drag to where we want the line, let go. Now we have the line. We also have a curve tool. Two ways you can go and use this. One is you can go and select the first point, select the second point, and then drag the line out to where you want it to be. Click again, and now the line is set. The other option is drag a line, and then you can drag it out. If you then click again, now the line is set. Either way works perfectly fine though. We also have a rectangle tool working basically as you would expect a rectangle to work. We have a polygon tool. We can go and select various points and it will automatically select a line to go to that and then select the end and now the tool is done. Very importantly, we have the ellipse tool which allows you to make circles and various other round shapes and also a rounded rectangle which in many cases ends up looking fairly similar because for the most part you're dealing with a fairly small number of pixels in this application. Speaking of things that are weird, we have the text tool which doesn't work at all like you'd expect it to. So if we go and press a spot, let's say we have the color cyan selected. If we press a slot and we start typing. Now, as you can see, it doesn't continue typing a sentence. Instead, it replaces the letter we have selected. It doesn't go to the next letter until we select the next part. Also, the color we had selected 
isn't the colour of the foreground text, it's the colour of the background, and from my experimentation, there is no way to set the foreground colour. It is just always going to be locked at white. I don't really understand the point of the text tool in this case, but it is certainly here if you want to mess around with it. It does have some other limitations we'll get to when we get to saving. Now there are a couple of tools I skipped over because they wouldn't have been that useful when there was nothing on the canvas. One of those being the select tool. This is going to be a rectangular selection. Now with this, okay, if we go and press control C, control V, now we actually do a copy and paste. Control C is another key that normally wouldn't work in a terminal application. So if we find a spot, let's say this spot right here, and then let go of the mouse press, it is going to be placed there. If we go and select off of that, now it is permanently there. But your other option with the rectangle is select the point, press the delete key, and now that part is deleted. But your other option with the rectangle is select the point, let's say right here, press the delete key, and now that part is gone. Now the other select we have tricks you into thinking it's not working properly. That being the freeform select. So freeform select is generally you drag around an area and then you let go and then you have a selection there. Here it expands it out to the closest rectangle. However, if you do a copy, if you do a delete, it is using the selection you actually made, but for some reason it doesn't show the selection properly. We also have an eraser tool which is a fairly large eraser considering like how big the pencil is, but it lets you erase things. You know how an eraser works. We have a color picker, which lets you pick a color from any of the colors available on the palette. And also this one might seem weird and unnecessary, but that being the magnifier tool. This, especially with the text here, doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, like it just completely fumbles up the text. It still technically is the text, but not really. The main point of this one is being able to make finer detail changes. Like, you know, you want to have a bit of a pencil here or something like that. Now, you probably notice it's also really laggy like this. It's not intended to be used with a magnifier, so you're probably not going to use it anyway. Earlier I showed you one of the menus, that being the colors menu, but there's also the image menu. This is going to include things like flip and rotate. Also, most things in here do have hotkeys, so if you want to go and remember them, go and do so. Flip and rotate. We have flip horizontal, flip vertical, you know how flipping works. We also have the stretch and skew. This is going to let you go and increase the size of the canvas, including the size of the image. So if I go up to 200 here, now it is a much wider canvas, but it's not just a bigger canvas, it takes the image along with it. If we go and undo it, now we're back. We have invert colors, which is certainly a look. We have the attributes, which lets you increase the canvas size independent of the image. So in this case, let's go up to 160, which is once again doubling, but it doesn't go and double the size of the image. Also, it does take the color you have selected on your color picker here, so make sure it's the color you actually want. And lastly, we have a clear image, which deletes the entire canvas. I like this image though, so we're going to go back to this. Now, once you're done with everything, you probably want to save the file. Go up to file, go up to save, and it doesn't actually give you a file type, but all of the file types are listed over on the GitHub, and you'd be surprised on how many things are actually supported. We have ANSI, Merck, not to be confused with Merck scripts, plain text. So this is why you actually have the text. The text is really inconvenient to use, but if you wanna go and make an ASCII image, for example, that's a reason you might wanna use it. SVG, HTML, I'll show you that one in a moment. PNG, bitmap, GIF, TIFF, WebP. You can't save as a JPEG, but you can load in the JPEG. Windows icon file, macOS icon file, and Windows cursor file. Let's go and save it as an HTML file. So we'll call it um, art.html. Save. This format can only be saved, not open. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. So let's have a look at that absolutely beautiful 
beautiful creation we have. That should be over here. There we go. Now you might wonder what's actually going on here. Let's go in here, go into code. It is just tons and tons and tons of span elements. Basically every individual section in here is an individual span. It's not an efficient way to draw an image, but it certainly does it. You probably want to save the image in a more image-like format, for example, like a PNG, like a WebP. If we go and try PNG, saving into this format will cause loss of any text information, letters, numbers, or symbols. Do you want to continue? So because in this case, it's effectively having a letter on a single pixel, there's not really any way to save that text information, so it just gets deleted. If we go and save that, once you go and save it, it actually updates on the file you're showing here as well, but the result you get is what you would expect. Now, this image viewer does not know what to do with 800% zoom, so let's go and try this in GIMP instead. And this one, here we go, zoom all the way in, perfect quality. But you may notice it's really stretched out as opposed to this one over here where it's more squished in. So you have to remember that we're not actually working with pixels in a terminal. Instead, we are working with character blocks. And these character blocks are not square. So things like this will end up happening. Let's say we have a new image that we haven't saved yet. I don't want to save that, I've already saved it already. Let's say we just draw some random stuff here, grab this, we'll do that. And then for whatever reason, we accidentally close the entire window. Now if we go back into Textual Paint, it will try to do a document recovery for us. There we go. Yes, I would like to recover that. And it doesn't remember everything that we did, but it's certainly a much better state than losing everything full stop. I must have not let go of my cursor before I closed the application because last time I tried it, it did remember every single step. In case you're wondering, especially if you've seen my GPM video, this application would be really cool, but it doesn't work in your TTY. Your TTY does not support a large enough color palette to make this application even remotely function. Also, it doesn't support GPM. If you try to click on stuff with GPM, it just doesn't do anything. It would be really neat to see a version that did work properly in TTY, maybe a smaller color palette with GPM support, but right now that's just not the case. This is not an application I'm going to use on a day-to-day -day basis or even just a regular basis, but I just love the fact that somebody sat down and thought, hmm, I want to make a clone of Microsoft Paint for the terminal. It's not going to be useful for pretty much anyone, but I love the fact that this exists. And also, it should work fine not just on Linux, but also on Mac OS and Windows as well. In the new Windows terminal, it is known to work. In other terminals, good luck, the developer hasn't actually tested them. But if you are having issues with various different environments, please do get involved in the GitHub, because even though this is kind of like, is kind of a jokey project, it is really cool that things like this exist. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this something you would ever actually go and use? Maybe you've used it before and you think it's pretty cool. Let me know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out my Patreon, subscribe, the blah, 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 pay link in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me and maybe I've been huffing too much paint.